Members. All right, welcome everyone. We are going to start tonight's commission meeting. I'm going to call to order the July 9th, 2018 Royal Oak City Commission meeting to order. We're going to begin with an invocation given by myself, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand if you can. As we gather here tonight, let us give thanks for the many blessings we enjoy living in Royal Oak. We ask for the safety and well-being of all who serve our city, especially the men and women in uniform. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, this brings us to item number three, public comment. Um, before we begin public comment, um, I want to make a few statements um, regarding some of the recent news and uh, surrounding um, the exciting development we have going on just outside this building. Um, the owners of Cantina Diablos and Red Fox were brought into some sort of press release by an organization that spread false information about their business. And I want to make a few statements regarding Cantina Diablo's uh, business. Um, no one from Cantina Diablo spoke to the press about closing. There is no indication from ownership that either Cantina Diablo's or Red Fox English Pub is closing. There is no issue with the lease, as some outlets have reported, as the business owners own the building. The owners will continue to operate in Royal Oak, hopefully for years to come. So over the past couple years, we've seen a group of citizens attack the city commission, attack the staff, attack me personally. In fact, my wife even was the victim of some disparaging comments. And that's all fine. But when you start spreading false information about legitimate business owners in this community, we have to draw the line somewhere. We're talking about the livelihood of the owners of Cantina Diablos and Red Fox. To suggest that they're going out of business, that they're not renewing the lease, is reprehensible at best. They have employees they have to worry about. They have customers that are wondering whether or not they're gonna be open. And what we continue to see is the same couple of people some outsiders from Royal Oak meddling in our politics, and they'll stop at nothing, even harming some of our local businesses in the process. I thought it was appropriate that we make Cantina Diablo's statements public here, and I think all of us as a community need to really reflect and start to give more credibility to truth as opposed to political fiction. Thank you. So now is the time of public comment. The City Commission values and relies on the input of our fellow citizens to make decisions. Now is the time set aside for the public to address the City Commission on any city-related issues, both on the agenda and not. I ask that comments be directed to the City Commission and not to individual commissioners. If you wish to speak tonight, please wait until recognized by me, the Mayor, then come up to the podium. For the record, you'll state your name and address. Please be mindful that the City Commission wants to hear from everyone who wishes to speak tonight. So we are limiting comments to three minutes or less. And there's a timer here at the podium to help you keep track of your time. If you don't wish to speak tonight, don't hesitate to contact any of the City Commissioners here uh, with your concerns, requests, etc. Please note that the City Commission will not respond directly to questions during public comment. However, we are taking notes and will address questions when the agenda topic is discussed or refer to the proper city department if the matter isn't on the agenda tonight. Our city manager is also taking notes and will look into the matters as needed. And you'll notice today Don Johnson did not find the Fountain of Youth. Um, rather, he is out of town and we have um, our fine uh, police chief, also the assistant uh, city manager in Royal Oak, uh, Corrigan O'Donoghue, um, uh, is sitting in his stead tonight. Um, with that, um, who's first? Yes, ma'am, here in the front. Hi, my name is Christine Chibenko. The address is 211 North Wilson. 
Avenue, and I am the Vice Chair of Royal Oak Youth Assistance. I'm taking this opportunity, can you hear me? I am taking this opportunity to thank the Royal Oak City Commission for their consistent support of Royal Oak Youth Assistance. The mission of our organization is to strengthen youth and families and to reduce the incidence of delinquency, abuse, and neglect through community involvement. We are in our 60th year of service, and I can confidently say that Roya programs directly affect Royal Oak children and produce results. Among our programs, skill building provides opportunities for some kids that would, they would otherwise not have, while Youth Recognition Awards recognize children who have a positive impact on their peers and our community. I've been a mentor in the Mentors Plus program for the last five years and can honestly say it is one of the best experiences of my life. Thank you for being there for us. Thank you, Mr. Bunko. Thank you for all your service and efforts as well. Mr. Ashley. Thank you. Before you start, I'd like to introduce many of the folks from Royal Oak Manor who will be speaking to, uh, tonight about a major problem that we have, and uh, I hope you hear them well. Um, I'm here to speak about a couple of things. First is about the Task Force on Aging for Seniors. Uh, it was the fastest uh, uh, set of, okay, we're going to have a meeting, and now we're not going to have one. But the question I have is, uh, one of the two people who vote against the task force originally, when it was put into face, was also a head of the appointments to that task force and is now leading that task force. In my feeling, and in, in, in business for over 40 years in the IT, if you're not really want that thing to happen and you vote against it, you can't lead it because you don't have the passion or the desire to see the project through and get the results that are needed. And I think that that is the biggest problem other than the task force, people on that task force are not seniors. They're caregivers. Caregivers and seniors are like night and day. And the other thing I like to, and what the rest of them are going to be talking about is, it so happens that the hang tags that we have for parking, uh, there happens to be all sold out for August and September. And that means that about 35, 40 people have no place to park and can't get hang tags. And we are afraid that we're going to get hit with tickets every single day. And my friends behind me will be screaming and yelling about it. Something has to be done. You people are moving way too fast on this, these constructions without thinking about other needs of the citizens. The city is a business. You run it as a business. You, 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 you customers are the residents. You screw with the customers, residents leave. Just think of Detroit, Hamtramck, uh, Mount Clemens, uh, 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 Highland Park, all these cities, the cities turned against the, their customers, the residents. They did stuff that forced those citizens to leave. It is time that this city start thinking about what they're doing with the, all this construction at the same time and, and stop having this done so fast that there's no room for the citizens to even breathe with parking and traffic and all that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ashley. Who's next? Yes, here in the front, sir. My name is John Ross. I reside at 606 South Williams. I've been there, a resident here in Royal Oak since November of last year. I've enjoyed the city immensely, and I appreciate everything the commission and the city itself has done for me. I feel safe. I feel relaxed coming from where I came from in Wayne County. Oakland County is a dream for me. Unfortunately, living there, you do have to have a hang pass. I'm not opposed to purchasing one at $45. That is not the issue at all. The issue is when I go to city clerk's office, and I'm told that 
there are none left, and I purchased it for two months in a row at $90, that's not an issue for me at this point. But when I'm told I don't have one available, and when Officer Sergeant Steve Turchow has taken the responsibility for parking, he has been very kind to take that responsibility on for us not to get tickets, and I appreciate that with our officers. But on approaching and sending emails to many of the city uh, people in charge, they've turned a deaf ear. I've tried to get an appointment with Mr. Rashel, Greg, to no avail. Just sit down and talk to him, letting him know that I'm willing to pay the money, just what is the procedure that I can be accommodated for this pass in the future. I'm not sure which way to turn, who to turn to. All I'm asking is what I need to do for the future so that I can go and park comfortably as a citizen here in your great city of Royal Oak. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ross. Oh, now I can see you. The lighting's terrible back there. I just saw a hand. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. My name is Ann Carlini Gardner. Um, I live at 4502 Briarwood. I'm here uh, as a representation of uh, Friends of Mark Twain Dog Park, and I brought some other friends as well of the dog park. For those of you not familiar with Mark Twain Dog Park, it was established in 2008 by the Royal Oak Animal Mission, uh, known as Rome. Rome worked hand in hand with the city to identify property formerly occupied by Mark Twain Elementary School to be designated as a dog park. So Rome members worked diligently to raise the money to purchase materials to fence the approximate five acres of the current dog park and the two acres consisting of wooded trails for the members. So over the last nine years, Rome members have not been able to maintain the same level of commitment as when the park was originally formed. Members passed on, their dogs passed on. For one reason or another, they just didn't renew their fobs. So the quality of the park has diminished. So based on this, we are the friends of Mark Twain. We've established to continue the efforts of Rome and work with the city to make it a true representation of Royal Oak and a park that the city is proud to call their own. There are currently over 300 paying members of the dog park, $40 for the park, $10 for the fob, $75 for non-residents. This park is used 365 days a year, rain, shine, or snow. There are approximately 50 daily users of this park, making this one of the most utilized parks in the city. This park is critical to the community to promote a healthy and safe space for dogs to be off-leash. And it is the only fenced-in, off-leash dog park in Royal Oak. Friends of Mark Twain, formerly Rome, is a group of park members who want to ensure a safe, clean environment for dog owners to enjoy. We believe in a positive, healthy community experience for dogs and owners. So we would like to present a master plan to you to foster a collaborative relationship with the city, define roles and responsibility of the park members and city, and to outline recommendations for improvements to address current issues and future enhancements. At this time, I would like to ask the city council and mayor to put us on the agenda for July 23rd to present our complete master plan. Uh, we'd also would like to be recognized as the group that represents the park. And we do have a draft of the master plan. It's not totally completed, but this will give you an idea as to what we'd like to see happen with the park in the future and what we'd like to work with with the city to improve and also maintain the park. So at this time, I'd like uh, Sarah Kinninger to come forward. And if, if, she, if it's OK, we'd like to present um, a draft of the master plan. Can yep. she approach? Absolutely. Yeah, Our city clerk, yep. She'll, she'll pass it down to us, Ms. Howitz. There's the actual plan, and then there's some resident or some people at the park that signed that weren't able to attend today. Perfect. Well, thank you. Thank okay, you. thank you very much. And thank I know you. we're not supposed to comment, but I do want to say one thing about Ann and her team back there. You know, we had um, a coffee hour uh, open to everybody, and she came to this coffee hour with her husband and uh, some other members of the, the Mark Twain Dog Park um, team, 
and um, really brought a lot of issues to light. We had a great, healthy conversation, and this is a product, I think, you know, uh, motivated by those conversations we had. So I really appreciate, and I know this commission really appreciates you taking the time um, to, to really put together a solid plan uh, that we can look at. So uh, a great, great example of, you know, um, communication and uh, getting on the same page. So I, it's refreshing for us. I know, I, oh, sorry, go ahead, Ann. We, we have, we'd like to complete the master plan along with uh, photographs and also, you know, costs as to, you know, some of the uh, improvements and also maintenance. And we really would like to present that to you on July 23rd if we could be put on the agenda. I think Commissioner Dubuck. Yeah, yeah Mayor, uh, you know, uh, with commission protocol, we don't need a formal vote on this. Uh, but since the residents are here uh, asking, you know, I'll go ahead with the second and third of, of colleagues at the table, uh, direct staff to add this to the next commission meeting. I'll second that. Okay. I'll third it. There we go. So we got three requests, uh, you know, right out of the gate to put it on the, for discussion on the 23rd. So thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome, and thank you for all your hard work. Uh, Ms. Hennessy. Carol Hennessy, 258 East 12 My Road, Royal Oak. I would like to thank the DPW and Parks and Rec for taking care of Red Run Park. I was there this past weekend and the grass has been cut and the debris has all been picked up. So all the big branches and everything are gone so people won't fall over them like I did. So thank you for that. Um, just some background uh, on the Royal Oak Memorial Society. I know it's on the agenda and I can't stay for, for it, but um, they have been doing services for the veterans since 1919. Something happened that was bad at one of the services we had. It was done by the singer, not by the Memorial Society. The city manager told me that it couldn't happen again. I told him it wouldn't. The Memorial Sh Society was as shocked as everyone else. It has not happened again. As far as being told about anything else, we were not. We have all volunteers that help with the service and we appreciate them. When they volunteer, they volunteer for what they would like to do. If it is something that honors our veterans, we allow them to do it. The Boy Scouts have always wanted to tend to the flags. The girls have always wanted to place flags in the flower bed and pass out flowers. The Girl Scouts brought their own flowers. We, no one had a problem with it. Then a commissioner didn't think it was fair that the girls didn't tend the flag. She bullied the Girl Scout troop and pushed a 94-year-old World War II veteran to get to the Scouts. While well, she finally got her wish and the Girl Scouts got to tend to the flag this Memorial Day. They talked, giggled, and kept looking around instead of standing at attention like the Boy Scouts did. It was embarrassing. We have always been equal in all that we did. We did. We have always invited every one of our elected officials. We have always tried to have our youth involved. They are our future and they need to be included. I am sorry to see that our commission doesn't have anything better to do, but worry about how an organization that is almost 100 years old should or should not do a service for our veterans. This city has a lot of problems right now that need more attention than an organization which has done a great job and has attendance filling the Veterans Memorial Plaza for almost 100 years. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hennessy. Who's next to speak tonight? Yes, ma'am. Miss Sparkoff, 606 South Williams, Royal Oak Manor. I'm not quite as polite as my brother was. <laughs> it was a dream to move to Royal Oak. Now it's an absolute nightmare. When you go to City Hall and you can't even get a pass and you're paying for it two months in advance, somebody should be ashamed of themselves that seniors are treated like this. We have veterans in our building. We have handicapped Many of us are handicapped. We have a lot of things going on. And to have no passes for us, how far do you want us to have to walk? We didn't come to Royal Oak to be treated like this. We came here to be treated fairly. And because we're seniors, that doesn't mean you can treat us any way you want. We deserve a parking pass. We're paying for it. We deserve it. How do you tell us 
that you're out of passes? And we're paying for it two and three months in advance? Something is wrong someplace. Somebody has dropped the ball. And it's time somebody picks it up, gets it back where it belongs. Thank you. Who's next? My name is Sandra Shepard, and I live at 606 William Street in Royal Oak Manor. And my issue, our issue, is about the parking. How come there can't be a list or reserve for the seniors to get passes so that they will be sure that they can have a pass to pay for when they want to, to park? And if they have family coming, it's always a problem or someone to see after them there's always a problem. I think we would be willing to pay, but uh, sometimes the tickets aren't available, so I think some advanced planning needs to be done for the seniors. A little more respect. Thank you, Ms. Shepard. Thank you. All right, who's next? Mr. Harrison. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, Bill Harrison, 2729 Trafford. The Liberal to change our culture through political correctness is wearing out. Now the movement is to civility or let's play nice in the sandbox, except that again it is only a standard held for others while you raise your voices in anger against Commissioner Macy when she suggested a change in the budget. And the way you continue to malign the former members of the Memorial uh, Parade Committee. This recent call for civility is just another example of the national political cancer metastasizing its way down to the local level. You socialists use deflection like a magician. You accuse others of doing what you are doing in order to deflect attention from you to others. The mayor's comments regarding the past Memorial Day parade management was contemptible when he alluded to countless issues in the past that he would be embarrassed to mention. He further went on to say, then he implied that they were related to race, religion, gender, all included. You socialists are the only ones that practice identity politics. The first thing you did uh, was to change the Memorial Day Committee when you changed the uh, committee membership was to politicize the uh, parade by getting rid of the large American flag that had become a tradition for the Memorial Day Parade. And then you included a woman's group against guns, again, politicization. Allegations by others were only the Boy Scouts were allowed to raise the flag at the memorial service. This was a physical ability issue, not a gender issue. The Girl Scouts, another allegation was the Girl Scouts only participated this year. That's not true. When in fact, the Girl Scouts distributed flower petals at the memorial service in previous years. Another one was there were other exclusions, always innuendo. Again, unfounded, unspecified allegations, which along with the mayor's comments, border, are borderline on slander. Now you are absorbing the Memorial Day Committee and other duties previously managed by the Memorial Society into the new Veterans Events Committee under the auspices of the city. The claim is that there will now be open meetings, which implies that the Memorial Day Committee did not have open meetings. The Memorial Day Committee did have open meetings and they published dates in advance. I have asked before, what is the end game here for shifting the Memorial Society duties over to a government controlled committee? To quote Ronald Reagan, government is not the solution to a problem, government is the problem. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harrison. All right, who's next? Going once, going twice. Yes, ma'am. You have the fastest draw. <laughs> My name is Brenda Rose. I live at 606 South Williams, Royal Oak Manor. My problem, of course, you all know, is the parking. First, you raised it from 25 to 45. Okay. The thing is, you need to print more passes. I work in the leasing department there, 
And the other day, a lady was coming in to sign a lease. And she decided not to sign it because I told her I didn't know if I could get her a pass for September. You know, I couldn't get one already for July or August. So it's like, I don't know, you know, it's just a mess. And you should try and print more passes at least so we have some. That's all. Thank you, Ms. Rose. Yes, sir. Good evening. My name is Bill Dollar, 606 South Manor, South Williams, Royal Oak Manor. Um, I wish to speak about the uh, the hang tag situation and the chaos that's going on. Um, my neighbor down the hall uh, waited too late in June to get a July pass for parking across the street. And um, so on July 1st, I already heard that August was already sold out. So I went to, I was going to go down over to the city hall on Monday, July 2nd. I was busy earlier in the day, so I got there about 4 o'clock, and I asked for a September pass, and they said we sold out two hours ago. And they indicated that they had printed less passes for some of the lots, for some of the city lots. And with this lot being closed, I would think that there's more demand for people going to any open lot, including the one on 6th and Main. So they also said that they would be assessing the situation in two to four weeks about the hang tag situation. The city's not going to go the same deal about selling them in advance and so on forth. They're going to reassess the situation. Um, my cohort just said maybe you could reserve some for those seniors that live across the street because they're thrown to the winds and are tough. Um, walking across the street is tough enough. Um, the lady I went to buy the tag for uh, did fall on the tracks crossing the street and broke her kneecap. Um, that's, un that's pretty major. So maybe there could be some reserving of some tags for us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Dollar. All right, who's next? Yes, ma'am. Good evening. Um, I'm Kathleen London, 5132 Thorncroft Court. Um, I've been a resident for over 13 years, and I love living in the city. Uh, I consider myself to be very pro-Royal Oak and excited about the many projects that the city's undertaken recently. Um, I'm not super excited about the prospect of a bar Louie in the downtown, however. Um, I got the impression that the reason that the Taco Bell Cantina concept was refused its liquor license request recently was because it didn't fit the city's brand or its vision for the future. In the current market, Bar Louie is another chain that is more at home in mall settings and prefab shopping and dining destinations designed to look like downtowns, not actual downtowns. A chain like Bar Louie will do nothing to attract the attention, dollars, or foot traffic of choosy diners focused on experiences and unique atmospheres who are already awash in choice in neighboring communities like Ferndale and Detroit or even Clawson. Royal Oak has a lot to offer businesses thinking of settling here and will have even more in the future with new office spaces, a central park, and increased parking. I hope we can do better to attract a restaurant and dining experience destination that compels people to visit our great city. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. London. Who's next? Going once, going twice. Yes, ma'am. I'm Sandy Smith, and I live at Royal Oak Manor, and I'm furious about the parking situation. I um, uh, was not able to get a parking permit for uh, August and September. I, was I said, well, where am I going to park? I was told you can park in the structure. And I said, I can't walk more than a half a block without having a heart attack. How am I going to walk from after I park my car in the structure, how am I going to walk back to Royal Oak Manor? I can't do it physically. They said, well, you can take a bus. I, this, is, this is just, it's mind-blowing. I am absolutely furious. I'm going to have to give up my car. I'm going to have to give up my job because I can't make that long walk to the parking structure. 
Furthermore, I'm wondering why can't Royal Oak Manor be, uh, why can't William Street and 6th and 7th Street be designated as permit parking for Royal Oak Manor? Um, the, the whole issue of walking across the street to the lot, that, uh, the lady breaking her kneecap is nothing. I know somebody who, who fell in the middle of Main Street with two bags of groceries. Um, fortunately, somebody jumped out of his car and stopped the traffic from hitting her. Uh, and I've heard of two people getting hit. It's very dangerous, especially for seniors. But beside the point, I couldn't even park there. I mean, there's no permits. What do I do? I can't handle the structure. I would move, but I don't have the money. I'm on a fixed income. I mean, this is just so outrageous and unfair. I mean, the city has no apparent concern or compassion for people who don't bring in big money. So thanks. Thank you, Ms. Smith. All right, who's next? See a hand on the aisle there? Oh, I'm Valerie Locke. I live at 606 Williams at Royal Oak Manor. And I wasn't going to address this until I heard some other people speak. So first of all, I'd like to say about the hang tag. I fortunately am in the lot, but I see what's happening. People come in off the street, in and park in unusual places. They take chances crossing the road. And that is the second thing I want to say. I'm up on the eighth floor, and I watch people cross the road. I've seen the lady get hit. I see the drivers screaming and yelling and waving their fist and near misses. I've seen them sideswipe people. I've seen people fall with their walkers. And um, I was not in town, but I heard this has been brought up again. And I don't know why some form of a light is not put out there, a flashing light, a button like we could push like they have at the theater. So that there's an option for people to get a red light and actually stop. I understand part of the problem is the railroad tracks. But maybe it could be linked in where if there's a train coming, the light wouldn't turn red and cause people to sit on the tracks. But watching that from my window is devastating because I'm on the eighth floor and I couldn't go down and help them anyway while they're laying on the street. And the people that, mainly it's a younger generation that drives too fast down Main Street anyway, but they get mad at us as seniors taking our time trying to get across the street with canes and wheelchairs and walkers. And it's, I would like to videotape it and bring it in sometime to show you how people treat us. It's not fair. So we need to do something about that intersection, certainly, even if you don't get to the hang tags, which I hope you do. I do have a little suggestion about the hang tags, as long as I've got another few minutes, another minute. I would like to see the people that, because I live in the lot, I don't know about hang tags, but I understand, could they not bring their hang tag in and have some kind of adjustment made on the one they have now to... Uh, uh, extend, you know, the next month or the month after until you get the actual hang tag that they need. Thank you. The general rule, you don't allow clapping, but I understand. <laughs> All right, who's next? Yes, ma'am. These seniors breaking all the rules. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Willie Ann Thomas, and I reside at 606 William Street. And it, it's, it's hectic. And being a senior, I have good days and I have bad days. Well, I'm to the point where I formulate in my mind I can do anything. But there come a time when things are not just that easy. And the parking is hectic, but I'm willing to walk a little so I inquired about some of the parking spaces that's on William Street by 4th and 5th Street. And I was told that, because I said, now, I have walked and seen some cars in those lots with stickers on them, with the little tags. And when I asked today about getting a tag down there, they said, well, they're not on sale yet. So how am I supposed to find out when those tags go on sale? I don't mind parking on this side of Main Street. I just don't like crossing Main Street because it's very hectic, 
and my grandkids love me, and they like to spend a lot of time with me. And trying to cross that street is very dangerous because some cars will stop for you, but then if the car that's in the lane closer to you stop, then you got somebody shooting around them, and mm -hmm. that's dangerous because kids are not always looking. Me, I have to stand there and put my head around the corner to see because I fear of getting hit. I don't want to be hit, never been hit, because these bones are old and brittle. <laughs> And I checked with some of the other places, like Park Right. I don't know if you know where Park Right is. Well, I checked with Park Right, and the lady told me that they're looking for people that works. I'm like, work? Why? Why I have to work? She said, because you're gone during the day, and you're just parking overnight. I said, oh, no, I'm retired. She said, oh, well, I'll call you back later. That was that. So, I mean, that, that I'm not even included in that. And they don't want just... Uh, coming and going. I said, I'm not going to come and go. I want a monthly pass. I want a monthly pass. And she said, well, we'll have to get back with you on that. So I'm just looking. We need, we need help. And if y'all here to help us, then do the best you can to help us. Don't just say, okay, and just throw us under the rug and say it's another day. Uh, help us. And then definitely, we're all seniors. We all have good days. We all have bad days. But my thing is like this. We're all human. And we need your help. Thank you, Ms. Thomas. All right, who's next? Yes. My name is Martha Wright. I'm at 606 Williams at the Royal Oak Manor. And I guess what I can say is we have a fine kettle of fish here going on with all, all of what everybody else has said. So that all I can do is reiterate what has been said. And I too ran into the problem the other day when I went to get my pass. Uh, for June, I went early enough and there was no problem. July and August, gone. Well, why is it gone? Well, it's just gone. Well, print more permits. Do something. Uh, I'm not going to keep repeating everything that everybody else has said. But I think it's very important that our voices are heard. We're senior citizens, and as you heard, there's a lot of people that are, 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 are handicapped, and the cars just, you know, sometimes they stop, sometimes they don't. So I think what that one person said about uh, extending a permit sounds like a good idea to me, and hope that you all take it into consideration what we're saying. Thank you. Anybody else here tonight to speak at public comment? Yes, and I see a hand in the corner. Yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> I think in our next city hall chamber, we got to get some stadium seats so we can <laughs> see faces. Hi, I live down the road too at 606 at the co-op and. Uh, you're all smart. I'm, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Can we have your name for the record? Uh, Constance Peel. P-E-E-L. I'm sorry. Thank you, Ms. I get Peel. so excited. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you're so smart. You're so intelligent. You're not our ages yet, but we need some help, and we don't know where to go. I write letters and say at the bottom, please take a moment and help us. I never thought being a senior was so tough. You know, just little things, little thoughts. Being friendly, be a neighbor. Be, let's be kind to each other. I'm so tired of all this hootin' nanny going on out there. And if we started here at the place that I've always loved, I used to come down here. I had my office on Washington. It was like it was like home. And I felt good. But this time coming down there, it's been like one thing after another. And if I can help, I'll help. The seniors will help. Use us. We've got brains, years of brains. Okay? Thanks Thank so you, much. Peel. <laughs> All right. Who's next? Going once, going twice. Uh, yes, sir, in the back.
Commission. Uh, my name is Lorino Scafoni, my own national valet. We currently service Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle and Town Tavern. Um, we have an, uh, an item on the agenda for regarding Lockhart's Barbecue's valet operation. I'm here just to ask that we postpone that. Uh, we table it till I can meet with the DDA in person um, to go to review our plan. I was out of town. I received a couple day notice um, of the meeting, wasn't able to be there in person to go through the operation. Um, so that's why I'm here is to ask uh, for that to be tabled till I can get through that with them because I think we got some, some better ideas um, and things that'll work better for the city. Sure. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your input. All right, anybody else here to speak tonight? Yes, sir. Good evening. I'm Alex Williams. I'm with uh, Mitchum Chapel Amy Church, uh, 4207 West 14 Mile. Um, just given what I've heard this evening from the seniors uh, and comparing that to what I heard at our first meeting that we attended, um, my pastor got up that night because it was about the, uh, the increase in the rates for the parking that the seniors incurred. And again, now, as, as one of them mentioned already, in addition to the, the, the rate being higher, now the passes aren't available and they're willing to pay. So I, as my pastor did that night, I want to ask that, that we try to do something to help. I'll go back to my church and we'll see what we can do to help. But it's one thing to, to offer money to help offset costs, but it's quite another if there aren't any, if there's nothing to actually pay for. Um, so I just, again, I ask that we try to do something to help those in need. I have a 96-year-old grandmother. I, I, I consider her in these situations and think, gosh, she couldn't, she couldn't get to where she needed to go. Her, she has trouble with her feet. She can't walk around as well as she used to. And if it was her in their shoes, I would, I'd feel some type of way about it. And I hope that, I hope that you all do too and that we can come up with a, with a solution that works. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Who's, who's next? Once, well, twice. I've tried that before. I feel like we've gone 36 times. Am I wrong? <laughs> All right, we're going to bring the meeting back up to this side of the table. Um, I appreciate everybody coming out tonight to talk about the, um, you know, the parking concerns outside of Royal Oak Manor. I got to tell you, um, I mean, I, I understood we've had some discussions about uh, the rates, and you know, um, there are some issues there from a legality perspective we're looking at. Uh, but this is a new issue to me. Um, this is the first I'm being informed, I don't know about the other commissioners, about the availability of the parking passes, um, which, is, which we empathize and, and we're concerned. I, d I don't know that tonight we have the ability to, to give you the full response you deserve. Uh, for me, uh, personally, I've been speaking with the city manager about the crosswalk, and I've been speaking with him about... Um, you know, uh, looking at some permit parking in the 7th and 6th Street areas. And I got an update that we're working on it, which I know we don't move at the speed of light. We are government. Um, but uh, but this, is, this is something new that, um, you know, I, I personally want to understand better. And if my colleagues agree, and I don't know that we have the right people here to give you the answers tonight, but I would hope that maybe just like we did on a former public comment, if we get a few people here to add it to the agenda on the 23rd, we can get a response back from our city manager. Um, that's not going to mean that we're going to wait to the 23rd. It just means that we're going to put it on the 23rd. Because uh, you came here to the public, took time out of your schedule, and you deserve a public response. So um, you know, I apologize that this is the first I'm hearing, and I don't have anything that I can help you with. But look, we understand your dilemma. We understand the issues. There's all, you guys understand the, all, all the other issues surrounding Royal Oak Manor. I'd like to hear from your management you know, uh, as well. So, um, so I, what I, I don't want you to walk away tonight thinking, you know, you're not being heard. I, well, I'm seeing the, the faces on my fellow commissioners that you're going to be heard. <laughs> um, but maybe I can just stop talking and see if anyone, Commissioner Dubuck, I saw your hand up. Sure. Mayor, uh, with the second and third, I'll, I'll add the uh, issue of uh, parking for Royal Manor to the next meeting agenda. We got one for second. Commissioner Dubuck. Uh, Ms. Macy and um, Ms. Douglas, I think I saw on the gun. And Although it looks like everybody's supporting it up here, to be <laughs> clear, Ms. Gibbs and Mr. Lavaster. So the entire commission is is supporting this. So, and, um, sorry, Mayor, if I can, uh, I believe that 
in the contract yeah, for the land sale for the developer across the street, I believe that we did get them to put in that contract that they're going to earmark 30 spaces for residents of Royal Oak Manor. Yeah, at the former rates. At the former rates. So, well, we so, so we used well, our muscle. We used our pulper. So, and you know the developer did a good job agreeing to that. So what we have here and what we'll be looking for from staff is some sort of contingency plan to get us from now until then. Yep. And that's that's what we'll be that's what we'll, yeah. we'll be expecting from staff at that. On that yeah. And a plan that's legally that's you know we're not going to get sued by some other interest group. We want to make sure that you know we don't create six problems by solving one. So. If you need to you can correspond with me. You have my email address. Yep. Because I am the legislative representative from Royal to the city government. I'm the interface. So any emails that you want to send me about this or any other thing, I would be glad to. Uh, Respond back and give you all the information I can from the management, but that's my job. I appreciate that, Mr. Ashley. So let's get this figured out. You know what I mean? We got to do it the right way. But um, I also bring the point out, I know this is not the time or place, but between now and January, when that parking across the street and the small parking lot is gone uh, next to uh, Oakland Community College, we need a place to park. Yep. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. How are we going to bridge this gap? Okay. So I apologize. I don't. I mean, you know, I don't have any answers for you tonight. But you, you, you have something more than answers. Our commitment to help you solve it. So um, we appreciate it, Commissioner Douglas. Yeah, Mayor, you said this in passing, and and I, I want to make sure that this is incorporated in what uh, staff puts together, and that is to bring the building's management in because I'm trying to figure out why they are not providing parking for people who so clearly need it. I mean, who are struggling physically. Um, so, I mean, they have a parking lot there, uh, and and I think we just need to make sure that they come to the table too. Yep. So we balance, you know, the available available parking with people who have. Needs. All hands on deck. Um, so Coco Seward is going to yell at me when she watches this meeting because I am way out of order. But we do. Uh, all of us are out of order. There's no. There's chaos. Um, so what we're going to do? Um, we're we're going to get it on the agenda on the 23rd. Mr. Ashley, I'll reach out to you when the city manager gets back in town. Um, like I said, he didn't swallow. He didn't find the fountain of youth. Um, uh, and. Um, you know, we'll go from there. So we're going to move forward with our meeting. Appreciate everyone coming out. Which brings us to item number five, the approval of the agenda. Commissioner Douglas. Move approval. A motion by Commissioner Douglas, supported by Commissioner Macy. Any discussion? Uh, Commissioner I, Gibbs. I would like to see um, the valet license Delayed, yeah, tabled. Well, no, can we wait till we get to the consent agenda? Oh, okay. It's under consent, okay. so then we, we can pull anything off okay. consent. Um, only because I, Coco's going to be watching, and I have to make up Hi, for my Coco. last <laughs> my last gesture. <laughs> All right. So, right today. <laughs> any any discussion? All right. With none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed. Motion passes. We have an agenda, which brings us down to the consent agenda. Um, Commissioner Douglas, Commissioner Gibbs. Yes, I would like to um, pull uh, item H off the consent agenda and discuss it after we complete the consent agenda. H? H, isn't it okay. H? So Commissioner Gibbs, LA. that's what you, okay, Commissioner I'll Gibbs, Commissioner that. Douglas, want to pull that off. Let it be noted, both want to pull it off. Um, oh my goodness, not a time for the ink not to work. Well. Okay, so we'll pull item H off to discuss it, um, which now the consent agenda consists of City Commission Special Meeting Minutes, June 19th, 2018, City Commission Special and Regular Meeting, June 25th, 2018, claims from July 3rd and 6th of 2018, approval of purchase orders, approval of 2018-19 agreement for services, Royal Oak Youth Assistant, award of contract, CAP 1720-2018, Royal Oak Roadway, Rain Gardens, Planning Commission recommendation to amend Final plan unit development, site plan 626 East 4th Street, approval of sidewalk cafe agreement for Shintai, 736 South Washington Avenue, um, and receipt uh, and file of non-action items, which consists of the June 2018 investment report. Is there a motion for that consent agenda? Commissioner Dubuck, we got a motion by Commissioner Dubuck, seconded by Commissioner Douglas, discussion on the consent agenda. With none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion passes. All right. 
Which brings us to item number H, formerly on the consent agenda for request for valet license agreement, 202 East 3rd Street. Um, Commissioner Douglas, I guess? Yes, thank you. We received in our packet information about the Downtown Development Authority um, voting against a val dedicating three parking spaces for a valet service. And we as commissioners saw some random correspondence, unofficial correspondence about um, why the DDA might have made that recommendation or why the staff uh, might have offered alternatives, but we haven't really had a chance to vet those alternatives. Um, and we heard from the um, applicant here today um, asking for a little bit of time for us to further consider that. And I, I don't wanna, uh, we've got Mr. O'Donohue here, we do not have Mr. Twing here, uh, both Mr. Johnson and Mr. Twing were intimately involved in those decisions. So, uh -huh. oh, hi Joseph, I didn't know you were here. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna ask the question, uh, what alternatives would the staff propose that would um, uh, be more desirable than what, the, what was proposed? I don't know that it would be more desirable uh, in that Mr. Twing had a conversation with National Valet about opportunities to have a valet operation on the private property within what we'll call the service drive or alleyway of the, of the private piece of property that would not necessitate having to designate three or, three or four parking spaces, on-street parking spaces that are available to everyone in the public and bagging those specifically for a private business that already has its own surface parking lot. So if they would like to provide uh, valet operation for their customers uh, in excess and have their customers park not only in their private parking lot but in other private parking lots, they're certainly welcome to explore the opportunity to have that designated space to operate on their own private parking lot. And uh, I mean, we did hear, and again, this was not part of the record, but I will say that we did hear that the, the applicant, um, that this came up suddenly, was out of town on vacation at the time that the DDA discussed it and would like to have a, an opportunity to weigh in. Um, is there a reason, can we think of a reason not to allow him that opportunity? Nothing uh, rhetorical, the well, rhetorical question. Yeah, the rhetorical answer is the DDA has regularly scheduled meetings that the petitioner was aware of. Okay. Uh, so I'm inclined to make a motion to postpone this item. Um, not table, okay. but postpone this item. Coco, are you listening? Um, Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Um, for one month, uh, I presume the DDA board will meet sometime between now and then, and perhaps they will come to us in a month with a resolution that makes this issue moot. Okay. We have a motion by Commissioner Douglas, supported by Commissioner Dubuck. Uh, discussion? Commissioner Lavasser? Uh, I, I, I agree with the concept, but, but I want to make sure that we don't have a problem here. You know, my, my understanding is the applicant had to spend about 1100 bucks just to get on the, the agenda. I don't want them to have to spend another 1100 bucks or another $750. So I was thinking more in terms of referring this back to the DDA so that they can further explore it and, and do it at a time when the petitioner is available to, to do that. Uh, presumably, petitioner would be available at the next DDA meeting. Unfortunately, it wasn't at the most recent DDA meeting. I mean, I'm inclined, inclined to think our action accomplishes that. I'm, I'm not sure. Can we refer something back? Do we have the power to refer something to the DDA? We do? Sure. Okay. I'm inclined to say my motion accomplishes what you're what you're striving for i don't think i mean if it's a postponement that doesn't mean an additional application fee yeah right correct it seemed to me that we're talking about the same application yeah mm -hmm. so so it wouldn't be expected that this applicant would have to go through the process again and pay it's just a modification of the plan and by postponing it if they want to go back to the next dda meeting you wouldn't anticipate them having to pay another fee i wouldn't expect no okay it's, it, Again, it's basically the same application. Well, they wouldn't be asking for valet operation within the public right away either, which is what the DDA considers. They would be asking for a private parking lot operation. I see. Better yet. So that's, I'm going to stick with my motion, and we'll see how it goes. Any other discussion? Mr. Gibbs? Uh, no, it's been voiced already, but thank you. Okay. 
Yeah, I, I don't think I don't see like an impeding cloud over our head where we have to make a decision right now. And if you know the petitioner for whatever reasons has some better ideas, I think we should always look to you know explore new and innovative ideas and hear all perspectives before we make a decision. So as long as the petitioner is okay with it and there's no you know, negative impact to the city to, to make a decision one way or the other. I think it's a good plan to postpone it. Give everyone opportunity to be heard uh, to the best of our ability. So I'm for it. All right, we have a motion on the table. Any more discussion? Call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. All right, sir. We'll see you in a month, I guess. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Item number seven, Michigan Liquor Control Commission License Establishments Request. A, Bar Louie, 510 to 516 South Main Street, request to amend the plan of operation. Transfer of ownership. Hmm. Well, this involves a transfer of ownership, but the only action that's being asked of the city commission tonight is to potentially approve the proposed plan of operation for the business. The notation on the agenda and also on the cover memo that this is a request to amend a plan of operation is not accurate. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mayor, City Commission, um, we do have a request to transfer the ownership of the Class C license and, and uh, uh, accompanying permits from uh, Blackfin to BL Royal Oak LLC. Uh, the applicant will be doing business doing business as a bar Louie um, the the BL Royal Oak LLC is solely owned by Anthony uh, Margawi okay uh, the applicant will be spending approximately four hundred and fifty thousand dollars on renovations including new furniture fixtures and equipment which will come from company funds um, the applicant has been actively involved in the restaurant and bar business since 2008 and has previously owned four other Bar Louie locations in Novi, Auburn Hills, Rochester Hills, and Dearborn. Each one of those locations have received a single MLCC violation. We spoke with the police reps in all of their those jurisdictions, and they've all spoke very highly of the applicant and the way he did business. The applicant has employed Chad Appa, App, Appa? I'm screwing this up all over, okay? He's, he's Irish. As the general manager, uh, he's been in the restaurant business since 2003 and uh, has worked for Bar Louie since 2010. If approved, Bar Louie operated as an American fair, full-service restaurant, similar to the former tenant Blackfin. Requested hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 11, to 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. and 9 a.m. to 2 a.m. on Saturday and Sunday. The applicant will request, uh, request permission to open earlier for special events with prior approval of the chief of police. Um, the applicant expects the food to alcohol ratio to be 75% food, 25% alcohol. The, the area has approximately 7,400 usable square feet. Total interior seating after renovations will be 183, including 37 seats at the bar and eight seats uh, at the back bar. This is a reduction of 43 seats from Blackfin's 226 approved interior seats. They are looking to do a outdoor service, small outdoor service area with four seats on the sidewalk. Uh, final capacity will be set by the police department. They're also requesting an entertainment and dance permit. Um, they have agreed to uh, sign and strictly adhere to both our entertainment and dance permit agreements. Uh, our findings are that this applicant is a, a seasoned owner operator of uh, um, businesses licensed by the MLCC, and we have no objection to this request. Um, if approved, the applicant will uh, have to comply with all planning, zoning, and building requirements and restrictions. Okay. It's kind of awkward how I address you right now. So I think you read that as chief, right? I did. Okay. Yep. Do we have any questions for the chief? Commissioner Lavasser. Uh, how does that 75-25 split between food and alcohol compare with uh, what Blackfin did and what some of the other establishments in, in town do? Um, that is a number that's provided by the applicant. We have no way to verify that, and I, um, each applicant 
most of them put somewhere around there. I but I can't tell you if that's accurate. We have no way to confirm whether or not that's accurate or not. Okay. So so when uh, when applicants are asking us for a plan of operation, they they make an a guessment, but there's no no follow up in that respect. To, to no. All right. Do, do we have a, a sense of? I mean, is is there an industry standard that distinguishes between a restaurant that serves alcohol and a bar that serves food? As far as what that split would be, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Any other questions for the chief? Okay, I'm, I'm going to guess we have the petitioner here tonight. We do, Ms. Allen and crew. Would you come up, tell us a little bit about the concept, what you're planning to do, your ambitions for this Royal Oak location. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Commission. I'm Kelly Allen here tonight with Anthony Morogi, and this is Chad Apap. Um, Chad is the general manager, um, having come from Nashville back home um, to work on this Royal Oak in Denver with Anthony. Um, let me just address your question real quick. The um, Blackfin's plan of operation was also 75-25, and um, there is no way for really anybody to to actually run a, a confirmation on that. And what, what people do that have been in this business for a long time is they look at their POS system, point of sale, and they kind of see where the food and alcohol comes out. It's a very touchy and, and in my opinion, ridiculous standard. Here's why. You can have a bottle of wine that is $30, and you can have it with the, the best steak on the menu that's 10 and that skews your, your um, alcohol to food sales like this. So it, it, it depends on a lot of factors. You can't just really come out of the gate and say, we're going to sell 25% alcohol and 75% food. It, it depends on, on your menu, your prices, and, and actually your varieties of things. So we try to, to look at what people have done in the past when we put this number in the plan of operation. And um, I think if we, if we did an audit, it would be close. Um, but I can say with, with certainty, um, if you've ever been to a bar, Louis, this is a restaurant with a bar, not a bar with a restaurant. Um, in all of the other locations that they have in, in Michigan, they have one in Rochester Hills where I live, um, which many of my family members and friends and, and family um, go to for dinner and special occasions. So um, this is, they, and they do have a scratch kitchen until close. So they serve food at all hours that they are, are open. So hopefully that dispels any issue with regard to the bar. Um, of course, the chief and Lieutenant Moore have done their due diligence and their homework with regard to Anthony. Um, and Anthony at one time owned eight Bar Louis, four of them out of state. He still owns um, four out of state, uh, two in Nashville, one in Alabama, and one in Florida, in Pompano Beach. And um, so he, and he sold back to the corporate folks the, the, the list in Novi, Auburn Hills, Rochester Hills, and what's the fourth one? Um. Dearborn. Dearborn. Thank you. Um, so this is his first endeavor, endeavor on his own um, without working for corporate. I do kind of want to address what was said in public comment as well. Um, you know, it's really hard to have a city of this size and a space of this size and a development of this size and have um, all truly unique and, and individual types of restaurants. Um, we, we can't always do that and certainly I've represented the landlords since they came to Royal Oak and um, 7,400 square foot space is not easy to lease. It is not up to, I mean with all due respect, it's not up to the city who the landlord leases to and he came up with a really great tenant and a really great person and a really great operator that will do right by the city and, and you can see from his record. Um, I mean, the chief did mention that he's got um, a violation, violation at each space. He has one sale to minor in all of these years at all of his locations in, in Michigan. And he has nine passes of controlled buys. That means the police department comes in, they try to sell, at, ask you to sell to a minor, and you do not do so, or the liquor commission comes and do, does so. So Anthony is a fabulous operator. You can't do any better than him. Um, I, and... and I, I recall trying to fill this space one time with a sort of a unique type, um, I can't remember the name of it, that's how unique it was, and it didn't go. I, you know, I wasn't going to get the votes at the table for it. And I do think that, especially in a downtown like you have, you need to have an operator that has that, that breadth, that depth of, of knowledge and, and in the industry. So it's hard to get like a startup in there, especially with the size. 
Um, I think that Anthony will, I know, uh, between the money that he's putting in and the landlord is putting in, so the, the figure that the chief is talking about doesn't even include what the, what the tenant improvement allowance that's going to go in. So, you know, Blackman dumped a lot of money in that place. They renovated twice, and it's going to be renovated again. It's going to be brand new. It's going to be gorgeous. Um, the food is good. Uh, it is not a, a kid hangout by any stretch. It is for adults, for families, for, for over 21, period. So um, I think it'll be a nice addition uh, to the downtown. I mean, you know, we have press today saying this one's going away, this one's going away, this one's not going away. They say it's going away. Um, we should, um, we are hopeful that the City Commission and the City of Royal Oak will welcome Anthony and Chad at Louis. We can answer any questions that you have. have any questions for the petitioner? Ms. Gibbs. I have a question. Um, is Bar Louie a franchise? Because I, I know there are other locations in Michigan, Livonia, for example. Are, are, are you the former owner of that? And you that was a corporate store. So we, okay. yeah, okay. when we bought in, there was, uh, I believe, um, five, four stores or five stores. And then we ended up buying the area development agreement rights for Michigan, Tennessee, and a part of Florida. So then we ended up doing our, doing our own. It was, we were a franchisee. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Dubuck. Uh, yeah, I'm just uh, curious about the live entertainment on premises. Just what was your vision for that? Do you all do uh, live music or is it mostly DJ and dancing? Um, no, most of, our most of our restaurants, we actually didn't even have a DJ, but we just had it as a thought because we, you know, we see where a lot of places have it. Um, so we're just, we're still kind of trying to figure out what, what we, what would bring in, uh, you know, the, the right ages and all that stuff. We don't want any, you know, crazy. So we saw a lot, like she said, we saw a lot of food and we're geared actually more towards, uh, 40 and above, um, is most of what our demographic, demographic is. So we're, we're still tooling with that. Um, it's kind of a, something that we're thinking about for later in the future to do. So the live music is in the cards then? Um, it, it not and honestly, it's not like a hundred percent. But if we feel if we, if we feel we need it, not not from the beginning. We're gonna see how it goes. If we feel we need it, if it's for compete to to compete, then we'll consider it. But right now, probably not as of right now. Yeah. I'd like to see more live music in town. <laughs> yeah, it's it's tough sometimes. It's tough sometimes. <laughs> Mr. Douglas. <laughs> yes, Mr. Marugi. Um, I are you crazy? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Don't you, don't, you, don't, you, don't you? I mean, restaurants are dropping like flies here in Royal Oak. We, the city commission, are trying to, to force them out, and yet here you are. How could you ever succeed? Well, based on <laughs> now you're starting to scare me, no. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I'll, be, I'll be honest, so out, of our, um, so out of our, we had eight stores, and out of all of our stores, six of them were in the top eight uh, for sales in the, in the franchise. And the other two were like they were number fifteen, and that was just because the square footage was smaller, but it was actually a higher per square foot uh, um, what we did over there. So we're pretty confident in what we do. We're very good with the you know with with the city, with you know corporate companies. I mean, we're very uh, we're very interactive with our customers. So I, I I'm never too worried about failing because we've been around a lot of restaurants that failed, and we've been on the, we've taken over a lot of restaurants that failed, and we end up doing really good. So I'm not really concerned. Good. I'm nice excited. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any other comments, questions? I do, I do have one. I mean, we got, uh, I mean, it's interesting to learn about your demographic. Um, I'm accused of not eating outside Royal Oak that often, yeah. but that's fine. Um, so uh, I have, I think I've been to your place once or twice, maybe a number of years ago. Not, I mean, Bar Louie, I don't know if it's the one you have up in the Great Lakes Crossing. That's ours. Yeah. That was okay. it. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. very, it was fine. It's great. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, but a question. I mean, we have a we have a couple changing demographics in Royal Oak that you have probably heard. Um, one, you know, we're talking about the gray tsunami that's coming. Uh, it's probably more indicative of the whole region. But Royal Oak is, you know, going to also, um, you know, have an aging population, which will be thirty percent of our population. Just you know, like the rest of Michigan. Okay. We also have. We're one of the few cities that actually has shown population growth in the state and in this area. 
And a lot of that, I believe, is attributed to the amount of families that are staying here. So you got, you know, it's not just millennials coming in, renting apartments for two years and leaving. You got families and you got seniors and we're coming together. And, and, and from a product offering, I mean, I know Commissioner Dubuck asked about uh, live music. Um, what kind of things do you envision for, um, you know, our senior population as well as our, you know, moms and dads that are pushing strollers all over uh, downtown Royal Oak these days? We've done a lot of things, I'll be honest, with even the... Uh Honestly, we get a, we do get a lot of families coming in. We did kids eat free on Sunday. Um, we've we really do cater to to families. Uh, Bar Louis is more of a place that is uh, very comfortable for all ages, whether it's families, whether you bring friends, your girlfriend, your wife, um, because it's it's a little more of a relaxed uh, concept. And honestly, we get we had a lot of senior citizens coming in, our, especially for lunch. We had a lunch special. We were charging for I think like seven ninety nine for. A really it was a really good launch. So we get we get a lot of senior citizens coming in. In fact, we used to have a what's his name? They used to come to a. We had the bicycle group, and uh, uh, it was a 65 and over, older bicycle group in Auburn Hills. About 30 of them came in every Tuesday night. Oh wow! To yeah. Come with us and religiously didn't like would would tell us if they're all going on vacation together and and weren't yeah. going to come in because they didn't want us to worry about. It. <laughs> so. So we, 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 I think it's a great concept that someone in 55 years old in a suit could sit down at the bar next to someone who's 21 in a, a jeans and a t-shirt and neither one feels out of place. Yeah. So we do well to bridge, bridge that gap. Brunch and brunch. Yeah, we had, um, and I, man, my mind is it's slipping on the name and I know that was the Tigers broadcaster. Um, Ernie Harwell? Ernie Harwell used to be, that was his favorite restaurant in Novi. So he used to come to lunch maybe once every two weeks, once every three weeks he'd come to lunch to our place. Oh, wow. Uh, I mean, we got him behind the bar. We took pictures with him, and he would love it. He loved it. I mean, he would come there all the time for especially the like the rice and beans. <laughs> so he used to come for that all the time. <laughs> well, be careful about that kids eat free Sunday. Yeah, no, if it's a good deal for you, great. Because yeah. I think the Macy's, the Fourniers, and the Dubucks, and even the Woodwards, we uh, a lot of kids. Uh, Jolly Pumpkin did it, and, and we show you up there with an army. Don't watch Donahue. Fifty kids. <laughs> We're not yeah. sure if we're putting them out of business or if we're giving them business, but it's okay. Bring it, you know, build the business for later on down the line. Also, I do uh, want to mention that they have a they're having a brunch, um, which Blackman did not have. Yeah. So, um, well, Commissioner Proust isn't here because mm. she's always looking for better places for for brunch. And um, also, Anthony told me tonight that you know, in in trying to always improve, they're bringing in a chef that used to work at Wolfgang Pucks. So that will um, they're yeah they're retooling the menu right now and yeah. doing some unique stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Well, we thank you, gentlemen, for coming out here tonight. Uh, thank you, Ms. Allen. Thank you very much. We'll, we'll bring the discussion uh, back to this side of the table. Um, before we start, I know there's been some things that have changed as it relates to liquor license law and, and those sort of things. And we have three new commissioners on the commission, so maybe it's helpful just to, um, Mr. Gillum, if you're okay, just kind of give them the 10,000-foot summary of, of sort of the criteria that we can look at to um, approve or deny uh, well, uh, this request. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I sent all of you an email this afternoon, and uh, at the risk of going over old ground, it, 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 for a number of years, the, uh, the state required actual formal local approval of the transfer of a license, even in a situation like this where it's an existing license, it's going to stay in the same place but with a different operator. Um, but uh, uh, the Michigan Liquor Control Commission regulations changed and local governmental approval is no longer required. Um, what those regulations do require, though, is that a licensee comply with any and all local ordinances. And here in Royal Oak, we do have a section of our liquor ordinance that specifically requires a licensee to have an approved plan of operation um, before they can start to conduct business and serve alcohol. So really that's what the issue is here tonight. Uh, the transfer of the license, um, as far as the state is concerned, has been approved at this point in time. But again, the licensee, Mr. Morogi, has to be in compliance with local ordinances, with, he has to have the approved plan of operation. So that's the issue before the commission tonight. And um, under the, the code, there are a number of, of factors that are set forth, the information that's required to be provided um, within a plan of operation. Um, uh, the format, uh, hours of operation, crowd control, um, plan for the use and layout of the bar, and any other pertinent information is requested by the city. 
So um, there are some nuts and bolts things that are required in, um, in a plan of operation that are contained in the plans of operation that we routinely see. Um, you do have some discretion as to the type of the business, the format of the business, um, the diversification of different types of, of businesses and, and entertainment. Um, within the city, within the central business district. But again, the issue tonight is really the plan of operation, not the license itself. Thank you, Mr. Gillen. So discussion. Motions, Commissioner Douglas? Uh, yes, I will move. Do we do this as one resolution? Yes. One, okay, I will move the three-part resolution as proposed um, in our agenda. A motion by Commissioner Douglas. Is there a second? I see Commissioner Macy with a second. Discussion. I'll start with Commissioner Douglas. Yes, I'm familiar with Bar Louie, the, what they have described, a, a family restaurant but geared towards um, people 40 and up, matches what I have seen in their establishments. There was a Bar Louie proposed in Royal Oak maybe 10 years ago, sometime like that. Um, and at the time, I thought it was a great fit for our city. I love the fact that your kitchen is open until closing. Um, met, I mean, that says to me restaurant, not bar. Um, and sometimes I'm hungry late at night. Um, I, I hear the comment about them being a suburban style establishment, but I think that's because they've been in the suburbs. If you look at the Blackfin space, which is you're not going to modify, I mean, the basic format of that space will be the same. I look at that and I see an urban feel and establishment, and I think that's what they're going to bring to our city, and I think they'll be an asset. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Macy? I guess I just want to say, uh, respond to Ms. London, who um, raised some concerns that during public comment that I do understand. Um, looking at this at Bar Louie and the, the plan of operation that they have, uh, I think Ms. Allen said it, this is a, a huge space um, in our downtown area. And it's, you know, it's a chain restaurant. It's sort of in the area of chain restaurant. It's a little bit difficult to say that a stone so from BW3, we can't have a Bar Louie. I think Royal Oak is big enough at this point to support some chain restaurants, and I think we also are big enough to have different areas of our city. Like, we have an area that, that has this type of establishment, and then we have an area that has these smaller establishments. And I agree with Ms. Allen, as much as it would be fantastic to have, you know, a small French uh, cafe go in there, it's just not realistic for the space that we have. Um, and I, I, I like Bar Louis. Um, there's one in downtown Ann Arbor, right? Uh, yeah, so uh, and it's, right, it's right downtown, and... Um, I mean, they said kids eat free, and I got three kids, and so do you. No. Um, I mean, I do understand the concerns, but I feel like for looking at the overall city, this is a good fit Good fit here, and I don't want to see it stay empty. Okay. Uh, I'll go to Commissioner yeah. DeBuck first. Um, yeah, I, I'd say I appreciate those comments, too. I think we need to be you know, responsible stewards of, of the, the style and the flavor and the tone of our downtown. But, yeah, this is a space that I think is well-suited to – uh, this type of business model, as, as the previous one was, kind of a large footprint uh, chain, not a national chain, but a regional chain. Um, and I think one of the primary, a uh, couple of the primary differences, you know, with the uh, uh, the mentioned uh, uh, Taco Belvo was uh, this establishment has a uh, very positive recommendation uh, from the police department, uh, very experienced operators uh, with a track record of success and, and very, very few violations, uh, which is good. And... Uh, we know and understand the product to be very much uh, a restaurant. So um, yeah, I think it's a good fit for this space. So I'm, I'm happy to support. Ms. Douglas. Yeah, I forgot. Commissioner I, Douglas. Thank you. I, I, I wanted to say this, and, and I forgot. Um, what was it? Mark Twain said, uh, reports of our death are great. My death are greatly exaggerated. Blackfin left this space last October. And while you're here today in July, we would suspect that you came to an agreement um, with that space some time ago. So it seems like 7,500 square feet of restaurant space in Royal Oak got filled in pretty fast time. Um, Royal Oak is a great destination for dining. It's going to remain a great destination for dining. Um, and this operator clearly recognizes the advantages of being in our community and is going to strike while the iron is hot. You know, I'll just, I'll just acknowledge uh, that public comment Ms. London made some pretty good uh, points um, and arguments. And I think things that we've all, you know, tried to, uh, at least in our in our mission, you know, bring to our downtown especially. 
Um, I think I, I am falling into the, the realm of, um, you know, this is a big space. You know, we do need to find someone that can actually fill it. Um, there's a lot of capital investment going into it. And I don't believe that, you know, places that are more, um, you know, franchises or chains can't live in harmony with all the great local establishments that we have, too. In fact, there can be this symbiotic relationship that goes back and forth. Um, I think Bar Louis is a, is a great concept. Um, it doesn't mean that we don't relentlessly pursue and incentivize and try to figure out how to get those independent operators in, which I think are probably good for operators like Bar Louis as well. The Commissioner Dubuck said they do have an exemplary record. Um, you know, I'm not part of the target market. I'm not 40 yet. I'm 39 and, you know, a few months, so maybe I don't know all. Uh, but next year, I'm sure I'll uh, understand it. Um, <laughs> uh, that's just a joke. No reflection on Bar Louis. I just had to make fun of myself. Um, so, uh, you know, I'll be supporting it. I think that, um, you know, like Commissioner Douglas said, this is pretty quick turnaround. Very exciting to see you come in and, you know, Blackfin had a reason and decision to leave. That's fine. But, you know, it's great to see um, Bar Louis come in and uh, if the votes lie the way I think they're going to lie and, you know, wish you the best of luck. So um, if there's no other further discussion, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. We didn't even have to risk having a 3-3 vote tonight, which yeah. would create, you know, this area of indecision. Okay, perfect. Good luck, gentlemen, and uh, thank you for uh, coming to Royal Oak, and wish you the best success. All right, that brings us to the last item on the agenda this evening, believe it or not, which is the approval of the Veterans Events Committee, or Committee Ordinance Second Reading. Um, I think I'm going to hand this over to Mr. Gilm. The reason why that's on the agenda, not the consent, is because we did not have a unanimous vote. That's correct, Mayor and the Commissioners. This is second reading on proposed amendments to what had been the Memorial Day Committee Ordinance. Uh, there were recommendations that came forward from the staff to amend the ordinance to expand the scope uh, of the committee beyond the Memorial Day uh, parade itself and then also uh, rename the committee uh, consistent with that expanded scope um, to the Veterans Events Committee Ordinance. And again, Mayor, as you indicated, um, this is back for uh, consideration on the regular agenda because the vote was not unanimous on first reading. If we have other questions, I'd be happy to try to answer those. We have any questions for Mr. Gillum? Okay, no questions for Mr. Gillum. I did make an observation that, never mind, Magically, he's returned. Commissioner Dubach, do you have any questions for Mr. Gillum? Uh, no, this is second reading. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just offer you that courtesy. Thank you. Okay. So we have a motion in front of us. I'll entertain. So moved. Commissioner Dubach, we have a motion by Commissioner Dubach, seconded by Commissioner Douglas. Discussion? Commissioner Levasseur? I'm going to oppose this motion, and I'm going to simply reiterate what I stated a couple couple weeks ago. The Memorial Society, which is a private entity, uh, and as one of our uh, uh, members of the public who spoke to us tonight indicated, it's an entity that's been around for close to 100 years now, uh, has been putting on the memorial service, uh, I believe since the 1940s, if I recall correctly. Uh, and I, I just did not see a compelling reason to uh, take that away from that, that entity that had, has served our, our city so well over the years and make this a city government established uh, function here. And it's a situation that, again, when this was proposed a couple weeks ago, it caught me off guard. There had been no discussion at this table before it popped up. No one saying, hey, look, we, we have an issue. Uh, let's you know discuss whether or not there should be an amendment to our or our ordinance. All of a sudden, it's just there, and it seems to me that rather than trying to be more inclusive, the motivation behind this is to be exclusive of persons that are are serving on the Memorial Society, uh, who perhaps some of the people at this table aren't really fond of, and we've had it said of of some of those members, uh, they've been told they're too old to be on a committee. They've been told uh, you, you haven't supported some of the decisions of this commission, and so therefore I don't want you on a, a city committee. And that's not what I believe what we should be doing here. 
as a city, we, we have to be welcoming of, of those who have a different perspective, who perhaps don't support the candidates that you want to support for, for city offices. Uh, and, and this just smells of, of the city. Uh, telling a, uh, a, a very dedicated volunteers, a group of volunteers, that they're not welcome to participate anymore in city functions or, or things around our city. Commissioner Dubuck. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, with regard to the initial concerns, you know, Commissioner Lasser, if he feels that it should be a, uh, a, a privately held function, even though it's a very widely known community event, I think most people that attend our Memorial Day parade and, and, and uh, Veterans Day ceremony, it's, on, it's in between the city hall and the library. It feels very much like a city function. So everything that happens there feels like it is endorsed and supported uh, by the city. Um, I think there's uh, plenty of reason to you know, open this process up to make it a community-run function, again, with posted meetings and minutes and, and public comments so people know where to go uh, to take part in these celebrations of, of men and women who have uh, dedicated their lives, uh, risked their lives, some lost their lives um, uh, in defense of our nation. That feels very much like a community thing and not something that should be owned by a, a private club. Uh, with regard to impugning the integrity and the motivations, of the other commissioners at this table. Commissioner Laster continues to lower the bar of, of, of dialogue, and I think it's disappointing then to repeat hearsay and rumors uh, uh, listed with, you know, baselessly uh, on social media platforms as fact is just you know, desperate and sad politicking that I think is beneath uh, the level of, of government that Royal Oak residents should expect. And, and I hope that you know the dialogue can stick to the issue and not to rumors spreading at this table. That's just that's just sad and disappointing. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, I mean, I stand behind my comments from you know last time. I think this um, uh, event in this ordinance, this ordinance is actually going to help. <laughs> Uh, in a lot of regards and um, you know open up the uh, the committee to many more participants so we can have you know an inclusive event and not have to worry about such partisan issues and things of that nature so um, very excited about it and um, I'll call for the vote all those in favor say aye aye, aye. those opposed Nay. Nay. motion passes all right that brings us to the end of the agenda. Notwithstanding any other business for the benefit of our great community, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Adjourn. Not adjoin. That would be weird. <laughs> adjourn would be more appropriate. Commissioner Douglas. So moved. A motion by Commissioner Douglas to adjourn. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Dubuck. Any discussion on this adjournment? I kind of like the first idea of adjoining. <laughs> <laughs> Next time we'll come in arm to arm. <laughs> All right. With that, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. We're joined.